make it into the house and you guys go meet the three from the previous season, Malika, Andrea, mm -hmm. and Aubrey. What do you remember most about meeting the girls and your first introduction into the place you guys will be staying in, which at the time was like bare and looked like a prison? Yeah. Um, I mean, we were all, I mean, I can't say we were all young. I was 20 years old. And so, you know, we had excitement, like, oh my gosh, look at this. We're going to have this experience. You know, I'm an energy person. I'm an energy reader, so to speak. Um, and so it was just a, it was a thing like, you know, coming in with these three girls who were there, it was like, obviously y'all trying to already, not these women, but the show, like, this is, this is clearly a recipe for drama and like mess to have these three like senior girls and all these other new girls. And they were already told that they weren't necessarily enough, but they were enough to like, so it was, um, I remember it being a little awkward. I remember um, liking Malika a lot. Like I felt like her energy um, was, was positive. And I remember feeling like she was um, a little older than some of us. And so just kind of like mentor guidance, like somebody who wasn't necessarily about mess. Um, uh, got bad vibes from Aubrey very early on. Really? Um, yeah, and and you know, again, I don't want nobody coming for me, but I just, yeah, we we didn't we didn't get along very well, and I'm and I and I, I am a lot. Um, as a person, I stand on that. I like that about me. Um, but I am I'm I'm a nice person. I'm a respectful person. Um, and. I think most of all, which I should have started with, I'm an authentic and real person. And I recognize about myself, I really, really struggle. And this is a me thing. This has nothing to do with this, the other people. I struggle with people who I feel are not genuine and are not authentic. And so it, it creates a, you know, just a thing for me. Um, Andrea was super sweet. That was it. I, I, you know, she was very, her personality was a little dry. Like, you know, she was nice. Mm -hmm. She was a nice girl with a with a huge, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Um, beautiful, beautiful voice. That girl was so talented. Um, but yeah, Aubrey and I just never gelled. Um, we never gelled. I, I had a really I had a hard time with, and everybody was who they were, right? There are cameras in your face all day, and you get used to that faster than you realize. Um, and then you just start to notice people whose behavior changes as soon as cameras you know, the, the real boom cameras on your face. And that was the thing that struck me the most and made me feel like, nah, I gotta have, mm. I gotta have distance here because this, what y'all getting, baby, you gonna get it when the camera's on, when the camera's off, you gonna get it when I'm in the bed, when I'm out the bed. And, and those, I think were the people who I gravitated to. The most. Um, and so, yeah. And so the feeling that you are this way when nobody's looking and then when the camera's on you, it's kind of like, a whole different scene that was really, really hard for me. And we had we had some some moments like this, you know, when we were on the show. Wow. Okay. You can say a word, you can say a memory, you can okay. say a sentence, you can say whatever it whatever is. Whatever I want. Okay. Whatever you want to say. It could be good, it could be mm -hmm. bad, it can okay. be ugly, and it surely okay. can be indifferent. Are you ready? I guess. Let's get it. <laughs> okay, the first name I'm gonna throw at you is Amber. Oh my, my heart, my heart, Amber. Oh my goodness. I love that girl. We hung out after the show. We stayed connected. We are still, we still are connected through that. social media. Now we saw each other. She came out from California, visited me when I turned, I don't remember, maybe when I turned 22, three, something like that, she came out for like a birthday party. I had like that girl was, I really, really messed with Amber a lot. I really did. And she helped me with my dancing when we when I was mm -hmm. on the show. You know, she had my back. She had my back. And I had hers. Very, very talented. Um, I ain't got nothing negative to say about Amber. That was my girl. I love that. Next yeah, on the list is Malika. Oh, mentor. Um, level headed. Um ve very, very cool girl. Down to earth. Um, I love her. I love her vibe. I did. You guys were placed together in a singing group, which was like one of the first challenges we see you guys do Why? on the show. And Malika, <laughs> what what's going on? What you, Girl, you, in the, you in the mix with Twix, honey. We gonna get into. It. I told you this is a deep dive. You should have brought your. Flippers, baby. We I'm into it. Them. Oh, I'm into it. I'm into it. Let's get it. 
So you and Malika were put together in a singing group where you guys basically had to learn songs, sing them a cappella on the street and hope that the people like you enough that they tip you and you guys come out as the winners of that challenge. On the show, Malika was struggling from what we can see. She couldn't blend. She couldn't get the yes. harmony. And you seem to be like really the most vocal about it not sounding right and it not being all the way together. Tell me what you remember about working with Malika in that group. Um, I, I remember exactly what you just described. She was struggling. And, mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, and this is the piece about me that I think, you know, a lot of people love and some people just don't. I don't, I'm not a person who thinks that it's a, it's good to lie or dance around like the things that need to be said. Um, and I, I don't, I don't believe that that's meanness. I believe that it's very caring to just go ahead and say, what's the thing. And I felt like, and this is actually a testament to how much people appreciated and respected Malika, right? And who she was as a person mm -hmm. that people were having a hard time just saying, girl, you struggling and it's, it's holding us back. I mean, none of us were perfect, baby. Like I said, my notes were not <laughs> hitting every time, mm -hmm. but that was the thing holding us back. And I think that people were struggling to say that because Malika really was somebody we messed with, like mm -hmm. that, that I messed with. And so am I, but I, I also don't, I don't think that that's, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna tell my husband, but baby, you struggling with X. Like I want somebody to tell me like, that's, that's who I am. And so maybe it could have come off as me being mean or, you know, negative. It definitely wasn't like trying to box her out. It was more like, if we don't address the thing that's causing us to not get this right, then we're not going to get it right. You know? And I think that's what I remember about like what was going on in that moment. But I don't even remember, I don't even remember, I, you know, I hope she felt this way. I don't even remember us having any bad blood as a result mm -hmm. of that, like mm -hmm. after. How were you guys able to pull it together? Because it looks like she got it together the day it needed to be together. Yeah, I mean, we just kept practicing. We just kept gotcha. practicing. But I, I think naming the thing helps. Mm -hmm. So the, the Bible says you got to call it out by name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I know. on the list. It's Tiffany. Oh my Tiffany. Oh my God. <laughs> Tiffany, she found me on she found me on Instagram um a couple years ago. I was so excited about it. Um bro broken heart. That's what comes to my mind because she was that girl's voice. I mean, she was so tremendously talented. I had no idea about the drama, about her being underage. Like all of that stuff. And so we were really sad. I, I was, I keep saying we, I was very sad um, when she left the show. Um, I had no idea about the like scandal, you know, at the time, yeah, but like, scandal. she was under age. How old was she? 16. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. She was under age. And so if I, I don't remember if she got cut or if it was because they discovered she was under age that she had to leave. I think that is what happened. And I don't know if that kind of got cut out because I haven't watched it in a long time, but that was what I remember. She was under age. And when that was discovered, she had to go and people were not happy. I mean, the girl was talented she could and she it. injured herself. She injured herself. Mm -hmm. her she hip. Like a, yeah. She injured her hip. Um, so Maybe that is how it was discovered, actually, because, you know, 20 years, you got to get the memories. Maybe it was when she injured her hip and they had to go and do doctors and all of that stuff. I think it was discovered then because you got to have the real documentation to see the doctors that she was underage and she had to leave. And that I mean, that was just tragedy. The girl was talented. My gosh. She could sing down. So, baby, up and down. She yeah, Tiffany was. Down. Yeah, this game is not that hard. Oh, good. All right, well, yeah. let's turn it up a little bit. Dinosh. Oh, Dinosh. You know, Dinosh was um, again like like a like a a mama in the house, mm -hmm. kind of like Malika. You know, Dinosh was like that. I think Dinosh had not very much patience for some of the mess because she was a back a re like background singer for Justin Timberlake, background singer for Diddy. She was heavy in the industry. And so I- She was a background think, singer for Diddy? Yes, yes. Oh, yes, wow. Yes. And so, you know, I kind of thought that was a conflict of interest, but you know, anyway. So um, she was sweet as pie. You know, I think sometimes people felt like she was a little too overbearing, but 
But again, so much of it ends up being editing. Dinesh was not, it wasn't that. I, I rocked with Dinesh. Like, I don't remember um, feeling like Dinesh was a problem ever. And then I feel like when I watch the season back, I'm like, oh, that's how y'all spend the Dinesh. Interesting. Like, you know, it's that. Because oh, wow. everything is everything is editing. Everything is editing, right? I, I was glad... I think in the end of the show, I was glad that who I was as a person, I felt was genuinely revealed. But again, my story was the fat girl who can't dance. And that was hard for me because again, I weighed 120 pounds at the time. I mean, I ain't seen that weight in many years now, but but okay. back then that was that was tough. And so I feel like some of that was editing because Dinesh was, she was, she was really helpful. Um, I think it had a lot of skills because she had done this professional work. So sometimes I think she felt like, all right, just listen. Like, I'm trying to give you the note, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I really rocked with her. I think she's, I think she's from Canada. I can see that for Dinesh. Yeah, I think Dinesh is from Canada originally. Um, yeah. Next on the list is Taquita. <sighs> Taquita Thorns. <laughs> your voice uh, is everything like your talking Taquita. voice is everything thank you Taquita yo Taquita just had my heart I don't even know how to say it like Taquita was a lot um everybody knows <laughs> say nothing great. Taquita was a lot I loved every minute of it like that was my girl we stayed connected like I, I spoke to Taquita, I saw Taquita many times after mm -hmm. the show. Um, she just, she has had had so many, the girl's been through a lot. You know, she's from Detroit and she had just so many things happening in her life, but we saw each other a number of times. We saw each other um, in New Jersey after the show. I saw her in Vegas after the show. Um, and I saw her in California a couple of times. Um, Taquita. That was that that girl was my heart. Um, I'm I'm I don't know what's happening in her life right now. The last time we saw each other, things just seemed different. Um, you know, but she is she was just always such a beautiful soul, so ridiculously talented. My gosh, so talented, and she has a beautiful, beautiful son. I remember after you guys' the season ended, she had a show on MTV with Cowie with Cowie that I was very excited about. And then I yeah. just remember it just went away. Like it just, it stopped airing. Yeah, I, they they had so much. I don't know what was going on with Cowie. Cowie and I, I never didn't get along with Cowie, but she wasn't like a friend of mine on the show. Um, I believe that something fizzled. And I don't know if it was Taquita getting pregnant because Taquita had a baby. <laughs> Um, you know, their, her son is, is double digits now. And so like he, he, that was around the time, you know, we, uh, we like randomly ran into each other in Vegas, which is so crazy. We weren't trying to see each other. Randomly saw each other in Vegas. She had a brand new baby. And that was around the time that it, within a couple of years of when their show was supposed to be. So I don't actually know why the show got canceled. I don't know if they, I feel like there were some episodes. Yeah. Uh, I watched yeah. Them. I was going to say there were some episodes. So I don't know if it was, you know, Taquita getting pregnant or what happened, but. Taquita Thorne. I want to find Taquita Thorne so bad. Yeah. It, we, you know, we could talk offline a little bit. Gotcha. That's, Love that's that. That's my girl, my girl, my girl. Side note, are, are you involved in church? No. Really? No. Yeah. People, people are all, often shocked by that. I didn't grow up in the church. So my, I was raised by a village. My parents were very, very young when they had me. And so mm. um, we lived with my great grandma and she was a Jehovah's Witness, mm. which is about as orthodox of a Christian you could get. You know, mm. ain't no holidays, ain't no pants, ain't no, you know, it was a lot of that. And so I think... I think my mom just really ran away from religion as soon as she could with 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 how intense of a religion a religion she was kind of born into mm -hmm. um or being raised in. So yeah, I, I've been in and out of church, you know, uh, of my own uh, on my own. Um I've been baptized, but I I didn't grow up in the church. Only reason why I ask your voice has so much authority. Like it has such a power and a presence like Thank that you. reminds me of hearing women talk in church and you yeah. know yeah that's why i ask i, um, I just 
women in my family because they I all got that. it. Mm-hmm. I love that. Next on the list is D Woods. Oh. Yeah. Uh <laughs> you said to say the first thing and I gotta do what I gotta do. Um, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is like, hold on now. Um, on the show, got along. I mean, you I mean, so sweet. We got along. She was great. She was talented. She was level-headed. Like, she was really, really awesome when we were on the show. But remember, when we were on the show, um, her name was Juanita. It wasn't D. Woods. Mm -hmm. That changed when the show was over or as the... I don't remember how that changed. Um, And so, I don't know if you know... You know, she's from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Uh, Her and her sister. Her Mm -hmm. sister's also in the industry, I think, Mm -hmm. was with Young Money. Young Money. Um. Chanel. And so we would every once in a while run into each other. We didn't stay connected. Like I stay connected to a number of women when that show was over, um, but we did not stay connected. And so, but not in a negative way, just like, you know, you off being in a singing group. And so my younger brother is a tremendously talented dancer and he was in the dancing industry in Atlanta. He was a part of um. Dance 411, which is a big like dance company mm-hmm, out there. Mm-hmm. And so they used to do these big showcases. And so I just, I can't believe you said that name because I, I can't not tell a story when it comes up. So my brother is, is a part of this showcase. So I flew to Atlanta. I'm like there, my, you know, my, my, my husband maybe was just my boyfriend at the time. This was a few years ago, years and years ago. And um, I see D Woods. Now, I, again, I know her as Juanita. I wasn't, we we were on a show together. We vibe, we were cool. Like, so I see her and I'm like, oh, Juanita. But like, we're very, this is, I think, intermission of the show. So we're in like a auditorium style thing. Baby, she ain't more than five rows ahead of me, okay? You just talked about how powerful my voice is. I know she heard me, okay? So I'm like, hey, oh, Juanita. You know, like, hey, girl, or something like that. And She's looking, you know, maybe perpendicular to me. She's like looking and talking, whatever, whatever, and doesn't respond ever. I'm not offended by that. I walk away. Maybe she didn't hear me. Maybe she did, whatever. Now I'm standing in line to get concessions. And she comes up next to me and she's like, got this hat. I don't, I, and I don't want to speak to her intention. I don't know if you're trying to be incognito or what. And she like leans in and she's like, I go by D Woods, not Juanita. If I was in a chair, I would have fell out the damn chair because. Okay. I was like, um, I don't even, I, I, I don't even remember what I said. I think I said, oh, okay. Like, okay, girl. Uh, okay. Like, what do you say to that? Right? Like, I remember having a, I was just like, what is this event? Like, this is not a celebrity event. This is, these are kids, really talented kids dancing. And there are some, you know, big time choreographers that are there. And, but just like, it was such a weird moment. And really, I think was just, again, people grow up. I was 20. I'm, I ain't 20 no more. I'm not the same as who I was when I was 20. And so, you 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 walk away from an experience like that. You don't know who a person becomes. You don't know what their experiences are that yield that, right? And so I, I was just very off put by that because again, I keep going back to Dominique and authenticity, same sentence every time. And so I was just like, okay, D Woods. Like in my mind, I'm like, that was a reason to ignore me. Were you afraid for people to hear you? It's given like I grew up with Jay-Z in the projects and I knew him as Sean and I don't know. Just it was very, very. You're not Jay Z. You know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I'm not asking for an autograph. I was. I saw someone I knew that I had a beautiful relationship with when we were in, you know, on TV together, and I was trying to say hello. I wasn't trying to uh, blow your cover. I wasn't trying to out you as Juanita. It was a very, very bizarre moment, and that was. Uh, that was it. That was it. So that was that's it. My, that's the memory that comes to mind when you say D Woods. Oh my God! 
Let's keep it trucking. Next on the list is Dawn. <laughs> Damn, I knew you was going to do this. Oh, my gosh. Dawn. Oh, my gosh. You rarely Dawn meet Richard. People. Yep, yep. You rarely meet people with souls as beautiful as Dawn's. I'll start there. Um, absolutely loved her when we were, when, you know, we were filming the show. Um, we, we got close, you know, we were really, oh, wow. really close on the show. Um, Katrina happened when we were mm -hmm. filming mm -hmm. and, uh, that was really, I mean, people were, we were giving her clothes out of our suitcase. Like they, her entire family was displaced. Um, by Katrina. And I think that was something that brought us all even closer together, right? You mm -hmm. go through a trauma like that. And so Dawn and I were pretty well connected. I remember us talking about um, her and the family, I think, relocating to Baltimore where her brother was in college or something and, and the entire family maybe having to stay with him. Like it was, it was like a big thing. And I guess in a D Woods fashion, you know, they both ended up in a group and hello, I ain't in no singing group trying to tour the world. So who knows? It just felt like, felt like our communication got cut off. And I was, I was disheartened by that. Like, I felt like we were in communication. It was cool. Girl, we need to link up. How you doing? You know, you in Maryland, I'm in Maryland. It was that. And then it was like, I don't have access to you anymore. I don't have your number anymore. I don't have your like, you know, and so that was that was a little rough because I cared so deeply for her. There are people who were who were on the show who like, OK, like maybe peace. See you, you know, see you when I see you. Um, but I was definitely hurt by that. I remember that feeling. Um, and she recently I don't remember if she DM'd me or I DM'd her based on a comment. So I, I went viral. A few months ago, me and one of my students were having a, a rap battle in the cafeteria at lunchtime and it made the shade room. Mm -hmm. And Dawn, again, don't quote me, I don't, I, she commented like, oh my God, like Dominique, da 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 da. And then I don't remember if she DM'd me or I DM'd her. And then we like had a little cute conversation, just like, oh my gosh, it's been so long. Um, but yeah, I just remember being very sad about like losing mm. uh what what i felt was a friend at that time wow but, i mean the girl and so and so i say i mean this is almost 20 years ago it's not something that i'm feeling now but right, right, this, right. This, of course. this brings up the memories um my god is she talented like i think when i think about every single girl on that show she is in myself included when i think mm -hmm. everybody on that show you know, it ain't a competition. It was, but it ain't. Dawn, just the tone of this woman's voice, the goosebumps that Diddy talked about with me, Dawn. Just, I think when I think about, yeah, I mean, I, when I think about all the talent in that space, right? Mm -hmm. Dawn is the person who will continue to ring in my mind as one of the most talented women to have graced that show. I've gotten into her music. Um, she follow, We follow each other on Twitter. I remember when I started doing music in college, she actually like retweeted one of my videos and stuff oh like that. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, that was like a moment for me. Um, yeah. But her artistry. Unreal. Her voice. Yeah. But also just creating her own lane. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that is, it's just something that's so commendable. Um, commendable. In an industry where people, you know, if you don't look or... Uh, uh, sing a certain type of music or look a certain type of way, you know, are people going to make space for you? And she's like, no, I'm just going to make space for myself. And I, it's I really so crazy that. to me, like with Dawn having this foundation of being on the show, being in that big girl group, then continuing yeah. on with Diddy and being part yeah. of his band. Yes. I don't understand in the equation with her creating the caliber of art that she creates. And it's just not no run-of-the-mill art like mama's graphics is amazing her sonic yeah, sound is all amazing it's all amazing. of it i don't understand why she's not like a huge mainstream artist like it's i don't i don't understand because i feel like dawn should be yeah on the same really... in, in my opinion she should be on the same level as like these other pop girls like dua lipa and yeah, yeah, dawn yeah. gives it like she gives yeah. it yeah 
It's in that's the, listen. It's crazy. I think that's a great question. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but um, I mean maybe. May, don't do don't do the eyes like that. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it could be feasible that, that that there are people who are getting in the way, you know. And Man. I don't know. I don't know that that's true. I that's you know this is mm -hmm. just just me putting two and two together. You know what I mean? How many how many people who've come from under Diddy, who've come from Bad Boy, have had continued success in separating from him? Name them. Thank God for Janelle Monet. Because remember, J Janelle Monet was only yep. up for a good little minute, yep. and she yep. she got the mm -hmm. fuck, and okay. now she's, she's doing great. She's doing amazing. Yep. Like yep. her career is at a at, is at a level. You know, I don't think a lot of people yep. thought she would get to, but yep. I think that may be the only one I can say that I can think and of. And that's that's a lot to say because there's been hundreds of of people we've grown up loving. I mean, people who have made tremendous music music that has shaped our culture music that is the reason why we got some of the stuff that we have today mm. and where are they now and i think that that's what i mean when i say i can't prove anything but also like i could put two and two together like it's a part of why i ain't signed the deal that was offered to me you know so mm -hmm. yeah but that, Dawn, I, I I want it for her. I want it for her. I want it for Dawn too, so bad. And mm -hmm. and you know, and I, we got to move on to the next person. But I feel like we live in an age where now, especially with social media being such a huge platform where people can catapult, like we've seen so many success stories of people in their tenure years or their or their latter years in their career, like get to a place to where like they catapult into a whole different stratosphere, you know, yeah, like yeah. Big Frida. Big Frida had been doing music since the 90s. Oh my gosh, forever. And didn't care forever. who was watching and who wasn't. Didn't give a fuck. And then yep. now Big Frida's like, Big Frida. Big Frida's been a yep. huge thing. Yep. Um, even Big Frida like with Beyonce. Big Frida with Drake. Big, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really even tremendous. Like Lizzo. like Lizzo had been, Melissa Jefferson had been putting out music for years. <laughs> Melissa Jefferson, happened, and I know that name because that's my, God rest my aunt's soul. She, my aunt, passed away. That's her name. Her name was Melissa Jefferson, so I know Aww. Lizzo's name. Yeah, but yeah. Lizzo had been putting music out for years, and she was like 32, 33 when she finally, like, caught on, and, yeah. you know, now she's Lizzo. So I pray yeah. the same thing for Dawn because she's so talented. Oh, my goodness. Well, she's so talented. But I think the, be and I think, but I think the beautiful thing about Dawn is she going to keep doing it regardless. Yeah. Because I, I, don't, I don't believe that she's doing it to get to Lizzo status, to mm -hmm. get to Big Frida status. Like I, I think that's a part of what is so beautiful about her. Like it emit, you know, she emits that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just something that I feel doing music in the way that she is doing it is feeding her soul, regardless mm -hmm. of who kind of picks it, put, picks it up. Oh, I love that. Ooh, Dominique, yeah. ooh, that, that, ooh, <clears throat> that just hit me. Feeding your soul, yeah. doing things that feed your soul. Mm -hmm. Next on the list is Shannon. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't have a, I don't know, Shannon. She was so nice. She was so nice. Mm -hmm. That that's what I got. I, yeah, Shannon was very very sweet girl. That's mm -hmm. what I remember. Gotcha. No no problems. Very <laughs> quiet. I'm just saying, no problems. <laughs> very quiet uh -huh. in her lane. Let me hit this two step. Like, you want me to do the background? You want me to blend? Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, love your on. voice. Uh huh. Yeah, I love your voice. Like, she, she was she, she was a very sweet girl. Next on the list is Andrea. Oh, voice, voice for the gods. The girl could sing. All that that little bitty body singing the way she sings makes no sense. Um, yeah, she was just she was a nice girl. Um, really, really clung to Aubrey. Uh. Mm. And I don't, I don't know if that was uh, to her, the uh, you know, a good thing for her or a bad thing for her. I don't, mm, I don't know. But, yeah, but very, very sweet girl and very, very talented. Yeah. All right. Now, thank you guys so much again for watching. We're about to head to a commercial break, but don't go nowhere. Make sure you stay in the mix with Twix because we'll be back with more after this. Bitch, I just rapped. <laughs> Did you really think that was it? <laughs> Baby, get ready for yet another big night in web reality. Not only do we chase the beat, we set the tone, honey, for one more show-stopping night. Presented by me, Oliver Twix, the second installment of Chasing the Beat, a celebration of queer art and creativity is here. 
Join us as some of the stars from Chasing Atlanta take one final bow, plus special appearances from some of our faves from Dallas and even Los Angeles. Be sure to watch it live on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. Coming soon. I get the bag, you get the bag, we get the bag. All my hitters in the club gon' get the bag. Ryan get the bag, Ryan get the bag, hit it. Ryan get the bag, Ryan get the bag, Yo. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If you are a performing artist and want the chance to join the lineup for this upcoming Chasing the Beat, to perform your music in front of our viewing audience, here is your shot. Email us now at oliver.twix at mychasingreality.com for more information. Thank you so much to the sponsors of this video. Now, if you want to be a sponsor of the next two exclusive video or get your content promoted on any of my other social media channels, head over to my Instagram right now at he is Oliver Twix and tap the email button. Shoot me a DM or fill out the contact form on my link tree. I look forward to talking to you. Now let's get back to the show. Now we finna turn it up just a little bit more. Next on the list is Doc Holliday. Oh.